It might be overdue for a complete refresh, but somehow the Toyota 4Runner continues to break sales records. In this video, we're going to see what's new in the 2023 Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro, and then put it to the test on our off-road short course. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. Twenty twenty three marks forty years since the introduction of the original Toyota 4Runner. It also marks thirteen years of the current generation vehicle. That is incredibly old in terms of car years. Even so, this dinosaur of an SUV continues to be extraordinarily popular with buyers. In fact, last year it had its best sales year ever, moving almost one hundred and forty five thousand units in the US alone. But the competition is catching up. Unibody family crossovers are becoming more capable, and Ford's new Bronco is finally getting its production issues sorted. That said, Toyota isn't standing entirely still. For the new model year, all 4Runner trims get a smart key system with push-button start, blind spot warnings, and rear cross-traffic alerts. In this video, we're going to be focusing on this 2023 TRD Pro, which is the top trim. We're going to check out all the features and then test its off-road capabilities to see if this is still the SUV to get in 2023. Under the hood is a naturally aspirated 4-liter V6 engine. It puts out 270 horsepower and 278 pound-feet of torque. It is connected through a 5-speed automatic transmission, and it has a dual-range transfer case. Of course, it's also enhanced with Toyota's multi-terrain select system, crawl control, and this one also has a rear locking differential, which does come on both the TRD Pro as well as the TRD off-road trims. A full-time four-wheel drive system is available, but only on the street-oriented limited trim. EPA rates economy at 16 miles to the gallon in town and 19 on the highway. Because this is a TRD Pro Edition, it does get some extra goodies standard, like a TRD aluminum skid plate, TRD alloy wheels, Fox shocks with rear remote reservoirs, and it also gets a funky rack. Whereas the TRD off-road level trim gets some really awful dueler tires, which are basically all seasons, uh, the TRD Pro here does include the Nitto Terra Grapplers. Now these are not three peak rated, so they are not good for deep snow, but they do have kind of a nice tread pattern. So it'll be interesting to see how they deal with the off-road course a little bit later in this video. I do love these TRD wheels. Uh, they are a 17 inch, which is nice. Lots of sidewall. In the back, we get 46.3 cubic feet with the second row in place. Now, that is slightly smaller because we have this slide out cargo tray. Personally, I would rather have more cargo capacity than this, but that's just me. Fold the second row down and you have a totally flat sleeping surface. Oh yeah, totally luxury accommodations. Additionally, you do get a DC and AC socket back here, and on the underside, you get a spare tire, although it is not a matching spare. It's not a tear grappler, it's just an all season. Back here, we also have a tow hitch. Uh, this is good for towing up to 5,000 pounds. Of course, this being a forerunner, it has the trademark rear window action. I love that. Being a body on frame SUV, you gotta climb on up. But that's okay. Uh, once you get here, you get kind of stadium level seating. I can look above the people in the front, which is fine. Um, I get a little pocket here. I get two USB sockets down here. Hey, they updated them to USB C. That's new, like that. And of course, this is being a TRD Pro, I have mud mats in the back that are also up in the front. I get an armrest with integrated cup holders, and as an added bonus, I can even adjust the tilt. Where's that level? There's a lever down there. I can adjust the tilt of my seat for comfortable cruising, which is really good. I can actually tilt back because I do not have a lot of headroom here. 
Uh, it is a little bit limited in space for adults, but you know, for most kids, it'll be fine. Um, I also get a pocket to put like an iPad or something like that. Plenty of leg room. I am six foot one, legs torso proportionate, and my legs and knees are fine. One nice feature for 2023 is that all trim levels of the Forerunner finally have keyless entry. Also, you get push button start. This is a very familiar workplace. Uh, in early 2001, I actually bought a Forerunner TRD off-road edition. This feels very similar with some minor adjustments. They've obviously updated the switch gear here slightly, um, but I do have that faux carbon fiber down here. And like my TRD off-road, we get a big chonky lever uh, for switching into four high, four low and whatnot. Okay, well, let's power it up. Um, the TRD Pro has had the push button start for a while now. Uh, that is now standard across the board though with all four runners, which I like personally. Although a lot of people argue with me that the key is better. I'm not sure why. As far as the gauge cluster is concerned, it's pretty traditional. It's old school. This is a vehicle that's been around for 14 years now. So yeah, it kind of shows it. We have a gauge cluster that has attack on the left, speedo on the right, and a really small little Toyota standard interface in the middle, which does give some useful information. You have tire steering angle, you have your MPGs, which are not gonna be great on this. You do see your lane information in here because this does have adaptive cruise control with lane detection, but it is Toyota's older system in that it does not actually auto steer down the center of the lane, it just notifies you. Honestly, it has the basics that I think are required for if you're doing long distance trips. Uh, that adaptive cruise control is a real lifesaver and I love it. Um, don't really need the lane detection personally, but it's a nicety that is on competing vehicles in this class. So if you're looking at say, for example, a Subaru Outback Wilderness, that will come with lane detect, which is kind of like a rudimentary auto steering system. You don't get it here. But I don't think that people who are buying the 4Runner are really looking for that. They are looking for something that is capable, uh, comfortable, can fit the whole family, plus gear without being an overly large vehicle. And I think in all those respects, the 4Runner really delivers. Now, in terms of comfort, these seats are one of my favorites. I have driven many, many miles <laughs> in my personal 4Runner, and I've also driven more miles in these press loaner 4Runners, and I've never had comfort issues. They're very comfortable to use. The climate controls are big chonky knobs that are very easy to use even with mittens on, so I like those. Um, overall, just this whole cabin experience is quite nice. I do wish they'd update the headliner though. This Faux felt just looks kind of cheap, but you know, um, a fully new 4Runner is coming. It is around the corner. I don't know if it's going to be a 2024 or a 2025 at this point because they keep punting it, but it is coming. And I think that we'll see updates on these little things. Like we'll have a new gauge cluster. We'll have this. We'll have a more efficient uh, powertrain. I think those things are coming. But in the meanwhile, this still is a very comfortable, very nice place to hang out. Now. In the center here, we do have this little eight inch color screen and it's fine. Uh, it is running Toyota's older system. We won't get the update until we get an all new version, of course. Um, you have XM satellite radio, you have mapping and it will do breadcrumbs on the mapping. So if you go off grid, you can actually find your way back, which is nice. And it even has Apple CarPlay, but it is the cabled variety. And even though the second row gets USB-C sockets up here, we still get the old school USB-A. So plug it in. There we go. Okay, and then once we're connected, basically we just tap the button and now boom, we're working with Apple CarPlay. Um, and I, because I don't particularly care for the Toyota system, I'd be rocking CarPlay 90% of the time. And it's very nice here. Uh, this is a good size screen. I personally don't think you really need anything bigger than this in most cases. Uh, the one downside with this screen though is actually we get into the rear camera because they do provide, the Pro model does have a surround view camera system, but it looks like it's off of a uh, Super Nintendo. It's super low res. And then when you cram the surround view into this really small screen, it just, it, it's hard to see anything here. Um, not my favorite um, aspect of this vehicle. Though still, it is nice to have a surround view system. And if we switch into four low, 
it goes into a trail cam setting again like I swear this <laughs> little tilt meter is straight out of something that I like flight simulator from the PC like back when you had VGA graphics that is what I'm looking at right there it's ridiculously old school I, I kind of could give or take the tilt meter because there's no actual numbers there I prefer real numbers not just vague little dials but it's okay. Uh, more important though is we have these side views on the wheels so we can see wheel position uh, and also our tracking lines. So that's gonna be really useful today and we are gonna test that out a little bit later. So what are we gonna do today? We're gonna take this on a short drive around town to you know kind of check out some of the features. But the main thing with this vehicle is its off-road capability. When the pavement ends is when this vehicle gets really, really good and makes it head and shoulders above any family crossover. And so we're gonna, we have a trail that we set up. It's a new test course, and we're gonna show you just how good this TRD Pro 4Runner can be. But first, let's hit the street. Okay, back in a 4Runner, always a good time. The funny thing to me is that this rig is very closely related to the Toyota Tacoma, of course, yet I don't fit in the Tacoma. I also think that the transmission and engine combination in this particular vehicle is just smoother to drive on a regular road. We just don't get the same hunting that you get with a Toyota Tacoma, which is just kind of funny. Toyota was able to get this vehicle just so right that it hasn't needed to have a significant update for many, many years. And that is why it is still popular today. Sometimes you just nail it. And Toyota did with the 4Runner. Now I hope they nail it again with the new 4Runner, which is just around the corner, people keep saying, uh, but nobody knows anything yet. Toyota is a pretty conservative company, so I'm guessing they're gonna stay pretty close to the original formula here. I don't think that they're gonna go like, way off the deep end with anything crazy. I think it's probably gonna be about the same size. It'll have probably a turbo or a hybrid turbo motor, uh, and we'll also have updated infotainment and some better materials, all things that people would want to see in this to keep the 4Runner competitive going forward. Because you just have so much competition now. Oh, I love, I actually really like the exhaust sound. Ooh, that TRD exhaust on this Pro. Very, very nice. The suspension on this is, of course, a set of Fox shocks, and they're using remote reservoirs in the back, which is really good if you're doing like desert running, if you're going over really rough surfaces for long periods of time, that prevents your suspension from overheating, which is a potential issue. You overheat your suspension, and then they can start to leak, and then you have problems. Um, this is set up for that kind of more endurance style driving. However, today we're not doing that. Today, we are gonna hit our new short course. Now, this is designed to test out some of the other aspects of this 4Runner, namely the articulation and the ability to transfer power around the system using specifically the MTS system, which is the multi-terrain select. Now, it's interesting on this vehicle, we have both MTS as well as A-Track because MTS is a variation of A-Track. It's like a more advanced A-Track, but in this one, they give you both. So if you come from like an old school Toyota that only had a track and you're like, I'm comfortable with that, boom, hit the button. If you wanna have something more advanced, you can start playing with different traction modes over here. So they haven't done a lot to make this vehicle refresh for 2023. It's mostly a holdover from 2022. And over the years, they've added some other stuff here, which is nice. The headlights are finally LED. Um, of course, we have the push button start and they did upgrade the head unit to handle Apple CarPlay. And all these little things help keep the 4Runner competitive in today's very competitive market. I mean, this competes in some ways with the Subaru Outback, but on the other hand, it also competes with the Kia Telluride, which is kind of crazy, you know, because there is a seven-seater version of this, albeit the third row is kind of tight. But uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is really the Swiss Army knife of family SUVs. I just feel like I'm at home in a 4Runner. It's so comfortable. Everything falls to hand nicely. It works like it's supposed to. It's just a, a really good, no-nonsense vehicle 
that is comfortable on the highway, yet also extremely capable off-road. You know, handling is okay. You know, you don't buy this thing for the pavement handling, but it's good enough. And these Fox shocks really do help kind of keep the vehicle well, relatively planted. If you really want to have better handling on pavement, but also not sacrifice off-road articulation, you could go with a TRD off-road trim with the optional KDSS suspension. Uh, we reviewed that on the Lexus GX, which it is standard on, um, and that thing is such a good vehicle for on and off-road conditions. So you can get that very similar suspension package on a 4Runner with a TRD off-road, which is kind of funny. Uh, but beware, if you want to do any future modifications to suspension, the KDSS can limit your options. But if you want a just awesome factory setup, that's a good one to consider. Of course, the price for all this goodness isn't cheap. You're looking at $55,380 US dollars, including destination. And that's assuming you could buy one of these without an additional dealer markup, which is kind of a thing. I hate to say it. In addition to being known for being just a supremely reliable vehicle, the 4Runner also retains its value. I bought a 4Runner early in 2021, drove it for 20,000 miles, even dented the quarter panel, and basically sold it back to the dealer for the same price I bought it for. Yeah, most vehicles, you cannot do that. <laughs> I mean, I've already stated it, this is a great highway driver, but now let's hit some fun stuff. Yes, this is a new off-road course that we've built, and yes, we still have the test hill out um, on the other side of the mountains. However, that test hill is at over 2,000 feet, which means it's gonna be covered in snow for six months of the year, at least. In fact, the first snow just fell last week. Here we have one at sea level, and this one is more technical, where the other one is more about endurance and getting up steep climbs and all that kind of stuff. This one really is going to show articulation in action, as well as the ability for this forerunner to shift power around the system. So this course is designed to be driven in four low. So I'm going to go ahead and switch that here. It's very easy. Just put it into the neutral, uh, pull down to H4, Flick it over to four low, and we should be ready to go. I go into drive and I get my trail cam. Now let's see what this baby can do. So this whole course is set up with a series of little uh, tests. First, we have a basic slant with articulation. So this is going to dip a tire down. And it's just kind of like, you know, getting used to how this vehicle is working. Now from here, I can see on the side the trench, which is nice. I got lots of room there. You can see my tire right there. Oop. Yeah, that's a little bit better view. These graphics are really bad, by the way, on this display. They are horribly low res. Okay, now this next ditch is even deeper, and I'm gonna have to really reach down with that left tire, and I'm gonna have to check ground clearance on the left, see if we're gonna slide. Oh, oh, it's so close, so close. Now we're just gonna move forward. I'm gonna add a little throttle. And I think, yeah, we're, we're not getting anything at this point. Four low, and this is not gonna get us there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enable MTS. Now that's the multi-terrain select system. And what this does is it allows uh, individual wheels to have brakes applied to prevent them from spinning and losing all the torque out of the system. Um, it kind of functions like a software-based hard locker, uh, like a, a locking differential, but instead what it does is it'll shift power left and right, both in the front and in the back. And we do have a locker in the back of this thing, but I'm not gonna engage it yet because let's see what MTS will do. Now we have different settings. We have mud sand, loose rock, mogul, and rock. I'm gonna go ahead and pick mogul because that's gonna have less wheel spin than some of the other settings. So hear that? That is the brake booster kicking in and it is super loud. And it's also doing an amazing job. We're completely lifting that rear tire, which normally would have all the power leaching out of it, but instead, nope, 
we're good. It's gonna do climb our way out of this ditch. Come on, you got it. Yes. See, super easy. So this next part of the course is a tilt. And I've seen on all seasons where we basically just slide to the right. Oh, uh, this is also a good opportunity to point out with the camera, I can actually put my wheels right where I want them on this berm on the uh, outside. Oh, that's a lean. It's showing that we're close to 30 degrees of lean. Hello. That's a bit of a tilt. And then we're gonna go up here and now we have a ditch to get through. I hope the nose doesn't hit. Gonna have to look outside. Okay, we got our tires planted in the hole and now we're just gonna try to climb out of the hole. Come on, you got this. Oh, so easy. Okay, and then up we go. Okay, and then the final obstacle here, I don't know if we can do this. I built this next section for small crossovers. I'm gonna see if I can maneuver this through the cutout because this thing's a big boy and uh, I don't know if it can make it, but let's give it a try. I have driven my Ranger through here, but I did it the other direction. I've never gone this way and your angle of attack can really change what you can get through and it's barely wide enough to send something like this through. So I'm going to ask Nick to come over and spot. Hey Nick, can you come over and spot me please? Uh, to try to get me through this without hitting the trees on the sides and without hitting the stumps that are in the way. I'm definitely going to be using these cameras a lot. <laughs> uh, looks a little tough, right? I, I'm going to swing right. Really? Okay. Okay. Yeah. See, this is the tricky part. How's that tree behind me? I can't tell in this video game of a display. Okay. So that was a lot of fun, but we're not done yet. You see, it was so much fun, I thought to myself, why not build an even bigger course? And thankfully, we still have the Toyota 4Runner to test. What we have are multiple courses with different levels of difficulty. Everything from a crossover with a crosscut to a 4Runner on a rock climb. Now, uh, you might notice there's no rocks here yet. Those are coming. They're actually on a dump truck heading this way, but we're gonna run out of light and that vehicle needs to go back tomorrow. How fast do things move at Driving Sports TV? Well, as soon as I finished saying that the rocks were gonna arrive, the rocks have arrived. But we are almost out of sunlight, so I'm gonna hop into that TRD Pro and we're gonna see what it does with the course we got. I really threw this course together, but uh, I think it's really shaping up. I am super stoked about how this is coming. And it is a tight course. This is kind of like uh, a lot of the forest courses in Washington State in that you have to weave through trees. It's just a reality. So this particular course will be covered uh, with 4 by 8 rock, which is the standard for uh, logging roads here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, but we just got the rocks delivered. We are cutting it close with the sun setting here at 3.20 in the afternoon. Welcome to the Pacific Northwest winter time. So uh, I should set up the vehicle here. Right now we're in rear wheel drive and we're already spinning and I haven't even started the climb yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop. I'm gonna put it into neutral. I'm gonna shift it into four low. And the reason is I wanna get my full camera system. I also wanna have the availability to turn on MTS um, as necessary. And we're just gonna see how this course works. Now we do have some issues here. These rocks are very large. They're designed to have other rocks around them. And we have some small little buildup of rocks around the edges, but it's not a lot. So we actually are gonna have some potential clearance issues. Listen for grinding. <laughs> and what else are we gonna have? Uh, I need to make sure I don't scratch the rims because this is a brand new truck. It has 546 miles on it. So let's not cause any significant damage if we can avoid it. Uh, so I do not have 
MTS on. I have to watch like that. I can reach out and grab that tree right now. It's so close. I can use the camera here and align where my tire is on the rock. I'm going to put my left tire straight up on the rock. It's going to climb over here. I'm just going to ease in. I'm going to actually two foot this uh, and try to ease myself down. I'm going to listen for any grinding. No grinding. We're good. But now we're going to lock that back wheel in, and this is usually where we have some issue because we have a ditch on the front driver's side, and then this back side is also going to start having to climb a slick rock, and it's going to have problems. So this is a great opportunity to see what MTS can do for us. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. I'm going to turn it to rock, which is the most aggressive uh, wheel braking technique in that it should allow for the least amount of spin before it throws those brakes on the individual wheels to shift power left and right. And I want to make sure I don't shimmy to my right too much. Just flooring it in. Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> Into the ditch! Oh, I love this course! Okay, and up we go! Ha! <laughs> That was fun. I hope you enjoyed this taste of our brand new course. I look forward to, of course, more testing in the future. Uh, I'm gonna have a blast with this. But now let's let's wrap this up talking about this TRD Pro 4Runner. Where does it sit in today's world? Well, it's an anomaly. It still is old school. Nothing is really that modern about it, but it's still just an amazing machine. It's the right size. It has the right technology for the right buyer. And it's the right buyer that is key. You're not going to be shopping this in a Telluride. I don't see why you would. The Telluride is modern. It has an all-wheel drive system. It cannot do that, I guarantee it. Um, but, you know, it's comfortable. Long distance trips. This also is comfortable. It can just do so much more. Um, but you do compromise it by having a truck ride, um, as well as, of course, having out-of-date everything else. But for the right buyer, this is still the best. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthat. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share videos. We make them for you, and I do hope you enjoy. Woo!